Welcome to Iskand Silicon Valley. Very happy to be back here with all of you for a, a rousing session of hearing and chanting, which is the lifeline for those who are engaged in the practice of bhakti, hearing and chanting together. You can never go wrong. As they say in Wall Street, you never go broke taking a profit. And in uh, bhakti, you never, go, you never go wrong by sitting down to hear and chant one way or another, taking time, this best use of human life. So we're going to start with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which as Prabhupada writes in a purport in the ba Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita rather, is a manifestation of the flute song of Sri Krishna. Of course, there's a material world and a spiritual world. And right now, in case you haven't noticed, we're in the material world. But there is a spiritual world, and we're actually part of it. And the way to connect to the spiritual world is through sound vibration. And the best sound vibration of all is the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's, it's the names of Krishna, but it's in a formulaic uh, process. It's in a formula that is uh, specifically addressing the Lord and his energies and in a very intimate way. And it's highly recommended and authorized and blessed by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So those who chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra will realize for themselves everything about the internal spiritual energy, especially those who practice chanting Hare Krishna and at the same time cultivating knowledge of the spiritual world simultaneously and also practicing uh, developing a certain frame of reference in life, which is being uh, cautious about the way um, we interact with others the way we uh, interact with Krishna and the Holy Name and, and living a conscious kind of lifestyle being aware of the fact that we've, we've been giving a been, being, we've been given a great opportunity in the human form of life and having come into Krishna consciousness that uh, having the association of Vaishnavas is the most precious thing that we can have not taking for granted uh, what we have this is um, one of the attitudes that helps us to chant Hare Krishna and uh, feel the effects, which is important. Otherwise, one of the great teachers of bhakti, Rupa Goswami, says that if you practice chanting Hare Krishna, but then you don't get the result, then you need to adjust so that you do. Otherwise, he calls it niyamagraha. You're doing it just for the sake of doing it without getting a result. So if you're not, then you have to adjust certain ways. Of course, there's different motivations people have. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says the most basic of motivations for practicing chanting Hare Krishna and doing devotional service is fear because I have a, 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 an abiding sense that if I don't do this, I'm going to be in big trouble. Uh, and that above fear is the, the sense of duty. No, excuse me, above fear is the sense of prospect, which means what do I get from this? And above that is duty, which is in the mode of goodness. And above duty is one actually has affection, has a, a, a taste for it, an appreciation. One could even say love. So the different levels of motivation. But any of them, whatever gets you going and, and doing the process of, of bhakti is good. And whatever motiv motivates you uh, on a daily basis to continue without any breakage in the process every day is important because if you can string together a week of good practice and then a month and then a year then five years, ten years, you'll notice that you're actually um, developing a connection to the spiritual world that you didn't know was there previously. And uh, the, the practice of spiritual life actually becomes real and um, palpable in one's life. So, because we have some um, kartalists here, we're going to start off with the Hare Krishna mantra. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namine 
Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine So you notice this picture of Prabhupada holding a danda. I don't know if you ever noticed that the danda is a lot taller than he is. Generally a sannyasi will have a danda that's the same height. But Prabhupada was taking a photo here and he didn't have his danda with him so Brahmananda handed Prabhupada his danda. So that's why it's much larger. <laughs> Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sarigora Bhakta Vrinda Bolo Shiva Sarigora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 
हरे हरे Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Give it Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 
Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sai Gora Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Sai Gora Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo 
जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद इताई गौर प्रेम आनंदे ज्ञान थिमरंदस्य ज्ञानं जना शलाकाया चक्षुरुन मिलितं धीना तस्माय श्री गुरवे नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री द्वैता गरार हरा शिवा सारी गौर भक्त बिंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा Ram Ram Hari Hari Go Premanande Hari Bo. So the first verse I'll read from tonight is from the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter twenty-five. This chapter is called The Glories of Devotional Service. Text number thirty-four. And this verse says, spoken by Kapiladev, a pure devotee who is attached to the activities of devotional service, and who always engages in the service of my lotus feet never desires to become one with me. Such a devotee who is unflinchingly engaged always glorifies my pastimes and activities. And Prabhupada writes, there are five kinds of liberation stated in the scriptures. One is to become one with the Supreme Personality of God or for, to forsake one's individuality and merge into the Supreme Spirit. This is called ekatmatam. A devotee never accepts this kind of liberation the other four liberations are to be promoted to the same planet as God, Vaikuntha, to associate personally with the Supreme Lord, to achieve the same opulence as the Lord, and to attain the same bodily features as the Lord. A pure devotee, as will be explained by Kapila Muni, does not aspire for any of the five liberations. He especially despises as hellish the idea of becoming one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sri Prabhupada Saraswati a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya said, Kaival yam narakayate. What did he say? <laughs> the happiness of becoming one with the Supreme Lord, which is aspired for by the Mayavadis, is considered hellish. That oneness is not for pure devotees. We'll find this attitude throughout the writings of our Vaishnava Acharyas. This is a particular attitude that we have, especially in our Sampradaya, that uh, the de- the uh, pure vo- devotees eschew the idea of liberation or becoming one with the Lord. There's various kinds of liberation, but of all of them, merging into the Lord's existence and losing one's individuality is considered to be the, the worst. There are many so-called devotees who think that in the conditioned state we may worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but that ultimately there is no personality. They say that since the Absolute Truth is impersonal, one can imagine a personal form of the impersonal absolute truth for the time being, but as soon as one becomes liberated, the worship stops. But um, from the Shri Upanishad, Monisha is going to prove how that's not true by stating from an authentic Vedic scripture a verse that proves that God has a face. Go ahead. Call a friend, you can call a friend. <laughs> Last Sunday we chanted the Sri Shapanishad forwards and backwards. Okay? Here in my in a patrina. Good. Halfway there. That counts for a lot. Having these verses on the ready and knowing when to insert them. Uh, tell us why she quoted that verse, why it's important. Um, she quoted that verse because it says, uh, O Supreme Lord, remove the, your dazzling effulgence covering your face. So the devotee's she, praying to the Lord, right? Yeah. Saying, saying, reveal your personal form. Mukham, face. Very good. Well done. Then we have... Uh, uh, 
That is a theory put forward by the Mayavad philosophy. Actually, the impersonalists do not merge into the existence of the Supreme Person, but into his personal bodily luster, which is known as the Brahma Jyoti. Although that Brahma Jyoti is not different from his personal body, that sort of oneness merging into the bodily luster of the Supreme Personality of God it is not accepted by a pure devotee because the devotees engage in greater pleasure than the so-called pleasure of merging into his existence. The greatest pleasure is to serve the, the Lord. Devotees are always thinking about how to serve him. They're always designing ways and means to serve the Supreme Lord, in, even in the midst of the greatest obstacles of material existence. The Mayavadis accept the description of the pastimes of the Lord as stories, but actually they are not stories, they are historical facts. Pure devotees accept the narrations of the pastimes of the Lord not as stories, but as absolute truth. The words mama parushani are significant. Which words are significant? Mama parushani. Devotees are very much attached to glorifying the activities of the Lord, whereas the Mayavadis cannot even think of these activities. According to them, the absolute truth is impersonal. Without impersonal existence, how can there be activity? The impersonalists take the activities mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and other Vedic literatures as fictitious stories, and therefore they interpret them most mischiev mischievously. There's no such thing as mischievously, mischievously. The, uh, they should say, they have no idea of the personality of Godhead. They unnecessarily poke their noses into the scripture and interpret it in a deceptive way in order to mislead the innocent public. The activities of Mayavad philosophy are very dangerous to the public, and therefore Lord Chaitanya warned us never to hear from any Mayavadi about any scripture. They will spoil the entire process, and the person hearing them will never be able to come to the path of devotional service to attain the highest perfection, or will be able to do so only after a very long time. It is clearly stated by Kapila Muni that bhakti activities or activities in devotional service are transcendental to mukti. This is called panchama purusharta. What's it called? Generally, people engage in the activities of religion, economic development, and sense gratification, and ultimately they work with an idea that they are going to become one with the Supreme Lord, mukti. But bhakti is transcendental to all these activities. The Srimad Bhagavatam therefore begins by stating that all kinds of pretentious religiosity is completely eradicated from the Bhagavatam. Ritualistic activities for economic development and sense gratification and after frustration in sense gratification, the desire to become one with the Supreme Lord are all completely rejected in the Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam is especially meant for the pure devotees who always engage in Krishna consciousness in the activities of the Lord and always glorify these transcendental activities. Pure devotees worship the transcendental activities of the Lord in Vrindavan, Dwarka, and Mathura, as they are narrated in the Srimad Bhagavatam and other Puranas. The Mayavadi philosophers completely reject them as stories, but actually they are great and worshipable subject matters, and thus are relishable only for devotees. That is the difference between a Mayavadi and a pure devotee. So this is an important distinction between devotional service and the general idea of what spiritual life is, which is to become liberated or to merge into the Supreme Absolute. There's a mis mistaken idea that I am the Supreme. I've simply become temporarily waylaid in the material world and bewildered by this external energy, which doesn't make sense because the Supreme means one who never is overcome by the lower energies. The jiva is actually a part and parcel of the Lord, same in quality, but different in quantity. And therefore, just like a spark that comes from a great fire can become extinguished or greatly diminished when it strays from the fire. So similarly, the jivas, the living entities, the conscious sparks of the fire of Krishna, when they become estranged from him or uh, f far away from him in consciousness, become covered by the illusory energy. And one of the mistaken ideas that these jivas can develop is that they are God. And that the ultimate 
realization is to merge into God and become one with him again. So this is categorically different from the Vaishnava philosophy, which is that we're eternal servants of God. And that by hearing about the personal pastimes of the Lord, which are transcendental and eternal, one revives one's original loving relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is a, one of the qualities of pure devotional service. As soon as one takes shelter of a pure devotee and begins to practice bhakti, uh, one develops a sense of uh, aversion to the idea of, of liberation, especially merging into the Supreme Absolute Truth. But there are different, uh, there are other different kinds of liberation which are mentioned in the Shastra. And now comes a famous verse from the same uh, canto, 29th chapter, 13th verse, which most of you already know because you're studying these books so carefully. Salokya sarshti samipya sarup yaikatvam apyuta diyamanam nagrananti vinamat sevanam jana. This verse again spoken by Kapila. A pure devotee does not accept any kind of liberation, salokya, sarshti, samipya, sarupya, or ekatva, even though they are offered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So there's a way in which we have our individual desires to serve the Lord. He may offer various kinds of uh, liberation, but the devotee has so much taste for serving the Personality of Godhead that he or she does not accept even the kinds of liberation offered by the Lord. And here's Prabhupada's purport. Lord Chaitanya teaches us how to execute pure devotional service out of spontaneous love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Shikshashtaka, he prays to the Lord, O Lord, I do not wish to gain from you any wealth, nor do I wish to have a beautiful wife, nor do I wish to have many followers. All I want from you is that in life after life, I may remain a pure devotee of, at your lotus feet. There is a similarity between the prayers of Lord Chaitanya and the statements of Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya prays in life after life, indicating that a devotee does not even desire the cessation of birth and death. The yogis and empiric philosophers desire cessation of the process of birth and death, but a devotee is satisfied to remain even in this material world and execute devotional service. It is clearly stated herein that a pure devotee does not desire a katva, oneness with the Supreme Lord as desired by the impersonalists, the mental speculators, and the meditators. To become one with the Supreme Lord is beyond the dream of a pure devotee. Sometimes he may accept promotion to the Vaikuntha planets to serve the Lord there, but he will never accept merging into the Brahman effulgence, which he considers worse than hellish. Such a katva, or merging into the effulgence of the Supreme Lord, is called kaivalya, but the happiness derived from kaivalya is considered by the pure devotee to be hellish. To be what? The devotee is so fond of rendering service to the Supreme Lord that the five kinds of liberation are not important to him. If one is engaged in pure transcendental loving service to the Lord, it is understood that he has already achieved the five kinds of liberation. When a devotee is promoted to the spiritual world, the Vaikuntha, he receives four kinds of facilities. One of these is Salokya, living on the same planet as the Supreme Personality. The Supreme Person in his different plenary expansions lives on innumerable Vaikuntha planets, and the chief planet is Krishna Loka. Just as within the material universe the chief planet is the sun, in the spiritual world the chief planet is Krishna Loka. From Krishna Loka, the bodily effulgence of Lord Krishna is distributed not only to the spiritual world, but to the material world as well. It is covered by matter, however, in the material world. In the spiritual world, there are innumerable Vaikuntha planets, and on each one, the Lord is the predominating deity. A devotee can promote it, be promoted to one such Vaikuntha planet to live with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In Sharshti liberation, which kind? The opulence of the devotee is equal to the opulence of the Supreme Lord. Samipya means to become a personal associate of the Supreme Lord. In Sarupya liberation, the bodily features of the devotee are exactly like those of the Supreme Personality, but for two or three symptoms found exclusively on the body of the transcendental body of the Lord. 
Shivatsa, for example, the hair on the chest of the Lord particularly distinguishes him from his devotees. A pure devotee does not accept these five kinds of spiritual existence, even if they are offered, and he it certainly does not hanker after material benefits, which are all insignificant in comparison with spiritual benefits. When Prahlad Maharaj was offered some material benefit, he stated, My Lord, I have seen that my father achieved all kinds of material benefits, and even the demigods were afraid of his opulence. But still, in a second, you have finished his life and all his material prosperity. For a devotee, there is no question of desiring anything material or spiritual. There is no question of desiring any material or spiritual prosperity. He simply aspires to serve the Lord. That is his highest happiness. So this is uh, evidence, mounting evidence, about the way in which the devotees, when they take to the process of pure devotional service, are not attracted to liberation. Uh, this is uh, summarized by Jiva Goswami when he comments on the first verse I mentioned, 325.34. He says that Brahman is not pleasing because it lacks three things. One is service to the Lord's lotus feet. Second is the beauty of the Lord. And the third is the taste of the sweet pastimes of the Lord. So these three things are relished so much by the devotee that he or she does not um, even th think well of impersonal liberation. So the next uh, piece of evidence comes from the fourth canto, ninth chapter, tenth verse. And here, in the chapter named Dhruva Maharaj returns home, in his prayers, he says, My Lord, the transcendental bliss derived from meditating upon your lotus feet or hearing about your glories from pure devotees is so unlimited that it is far beyond the stage of Brahmananda, wherein one thinks himself merged in the impersonal Brahman as one with the Supreme. Since Brahmananda is also defeated by the transcendental bliss derived from devotional service, then what to speak of the temporary blissfulness of elevating oneself to the heavenly planets, which is ended by the separating sword of time. Although one may be elevated in the to the heavenly planets, he falls down in due course of time. So this, what we're discussing now, is uh, sambandha gyan, is knowledge of our relationship with the Supreme. And since we're living entities, the Shastra says, we're interested in one thing only. What is that? Happiness, pleasure. In the material world, our main interest is in avoiding distress because that's the best you can do here. But when we hear about the gradations of happiness that are available, then we can aspire for that. So what we're doing is hearing about the various levels of happiness that are delineated in the Srimad Bhagavatam and which uh, Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu lists uh, uh, in various categories. So now... Uh, you may have noticed that human beings have this particular quality that when you show a ladder, that the, uh, as soon as a, uh, a human sees a ladder, uh, he or she wants to climb it. When we know of, of something that's better or higher, then we want to go there, and we want to experience it. So it begins by hearing. So right now we're hearing about the various categories of, of happiness. Purport, the transcendental bliss derived from devotional service, primarily from shravanam kirtanam, hearing and chanting, cannot be compared to the happiness derived by karmis by elevating themselves to the heavenly planets, or by jnanis or yogis who enjoy oneness with the supreme impersonal Brahman. Yogis generally meditate upon the transcendental form of Vishnu, but devotees not only meditate upon him, but actually engage in the direct service of the Lord. In the previous verse, we find the phrase bhavapyaya, which refers to birth and death. The Lord can give relief from the chain of birth and death. It is a misunderstanding to think, as do the monas, monas, that when one gets relief from the process of birth and death, he merges into the Supreme Brahman. Here it is clearly said that the transcendental bliss derived from shravanam kirtanam, means hearing and chanting, by pure devotees cannot be compared to Brahmananda or the impersonal conception of transcendental bliss derived by merging into the Absolute. 
The position of, of karmis is still more degraded. Their aim is to elevate themselves to the higher planetary systems. It is said, yanti deva vrta devan, persons who worship the demigods are elevated to the heavenly planets. And now that's, um, often we find uh, this statement, we don't uh, normally see people in Silicon Valley uh, aspiring for the heavenly planets. In fact, I've only met one person in my life uh, when I lived at the Calcutta Temple on Albert, 1 Albert Road and that uh, actually proclaimed that he was working to reach the heavenly planets. <laughs> I've never met anybody else. However, we do notice that people try to migrate from one place to the next in this world or in this, on this planet to try to get to a better place. Everyone's moving around trying to find this is elevationism. There's a way in the Vedas that there's a process th through which one uh, performs various sacrifices, mantras, and so forth. And uh, this helps one to stay in an elevated position in the modes of material nature. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan, Pitran Yanti Patir Vrata, Bhutani Yanti Bhuteja, Yanti Mam Yaji No Pimam. He's saying you can go wherever you like. And it, it's a free universe. You can move about the universe as you wish. And there are ways to, to direct yourself there. Of course, the material world is called Durga, which means it's difficult to go unless you know the process to move from one place to another. And then you have to have patience. And even when you get there, you'll find the same uh, kinds of uh, difficulties that you do everywhere else in the material world. Krishna tells, says this categorically in the Bhagavad Gita, A Brahma Bhuvana Loka Punar Avadar Chinyojuna Mamu Petya Tukontaya Punar Janma Navidyate. That uh, he certifies from the topmost planet, the heavenly planets, down to the lowest, Patala, the hellish planets, all are places of misery where repeated birth and death take place, period, full stop. The position of karmis is still more degraded. Their aim is to elevate themselves to the higher planetary systems. Hey, it is said, yanti deva vrta devan. Persons who worship the demigods are elevated to the heavenly planets. But elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita, we find shinye punye martya lokam vishanti. Those who are elevated to the higher planetary systems must come down again as soon as the results of their pious activities are exhausted. And it's not a, a, a very pleasant process either. There's some descriptions in the Puranas about those who exhaust their heavenly uh, credits then uh, are devoured by rakshasas and they fall down in the form of raindrops and uh, become consumed by grains and then they come back into the semen and then they come back into the birth and death cycle here in the middle planetary system. It's a very inconvenient and troublesome process living in the material world, whichever way you look at it. They are like the modern astronauts who go to the moon. As soon as their fuel is used up, they're obliged to come back down to this earth. As the modern astronauts who go to the moon or other heavenly planets by force of jet propulsion have come down to other heavenly planets by force, uh, come down uh, after, again, after exhausting their fuel, so also do those who are elevated to the heavenly planets by force of yagyas and pious activities. The other day, somebody sent me a little video clip of a man who was uh, convinced that the world is flat. And so to prove it, he built himself a rocket, and he got in it, and uh, it shot up into the uh, higher realms of this atmosphere and then came crashing down. <laughs> uh, he hurt himself, uh, and he didn't prove anything. And that's what happens. Anat Anakasi lulitat, by the sword of time, one is cut from his exalted position within this material world, and he comes down again. That's pretty clear. Dhruva Maharaj appreciated that the results of devotional service are far more valuable than merging into the absolute or being elevated to the heavenly planets. The words patatam vimanat are very significant. Vimana means airplane. Those who are elevated to the heavenly planets are like airplanes, which drop when they run out of fuel. <laughs> okay, so we're getting a, a kind of a pattern and a picture here, which can be very helpful. And the next comes in 42024. And um, this is from Pritu Maharaj. 
uh, now you're going to start to hear in a prayer by Prithi Maharaj when he's speaking to the Lord, the, the, his mood of appreciation for hearing and chanting. We heard how Shravanam Kirtanam is full of pleasure. And this is important because the mind wants to look for uh, happiness in many different corners of the universe, and it's not to be had. You can have it from hearing and chanting, Shravanam Kirtan, Kirtanam. You can hear about the Lord, you can hear the instructions of the Lord. They're all absolute and transcendental, and they're full of potencies. And these potencies can not only awaken the soul from its slumber, but also uh, infuse the, the jiva, the living entity, with the internal potency from the spiritual world through which the soul feels uh, so much happiness that uh, he doesn't want anything else. So now, here's a, here's a verse. This is 4.20.24 from a Pritu Maharaj. If you haven't read the fourth canto, there's a particular effect that the fourth canto will have on you. If you just read it, read it. One of the effects you'll hear at the end is you should read it again and again. At least, I think it says at least three or four times you should read the fourth canto. And you'll feel like it when you finish the fourth canto of going back. Uh, and so much of the fourth canto is about Prithu Maharaj. And you may think, oh, he's a king. I don't know if I'm so interested, but he has some of the most interesting and potent prayers in his, his lifestyle and instructions are so sound and commonsensical that it, it helps to readjust one's mind, especially in this time of chaos in the world. There's a, a lot of political chaos. Nobody knows uh, what the actual, what morality means anymore. Nobody knows what, law is a social science. If you study law, you'll find out as a social science, people make stuff up and they say, oh, it starts here and it stops there. But that can be moved at any time, <laughs> according to the social climate. And um, so uh, it, it's a very uh, unnerving time to live. But when you hear about Prithu Maharaj, his prayers, and he shows how to live a life of duty and at the same time be fully absorbed in Shravanam Kirtanam. And that's useful because we can all do that too. And without further ado, here's his prayer. My dear Lord, I therefore do not wish to have the benedictions of merging into your existence. A benediction in which there is no existence of the nectarian beverage of your lotus feet. Of what? I want the benediction of at least one million ears. For thus I may be able to hear about the glories of your lotus feet from the mouths of your pure devotees. Prabhupada's purport. In the previous verse, Marsh Pritu addressed the Lord as Kaivalya Pati the master of the liberation of merging into his existence. This does not mean that he was anxious for a Kaivalya liberation. That is made clear in this verse. My dear Lord, I do not want such a benediction. Maharaj Priktu wanted to have a million ears to hear the glories of the lotus feet of the Lord. He specifically mentioned that the glories of the Lord should emanate from the mouths of pure devotees who speak from the core of their hearts. It is stated in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam 113, Shukamukad Amrita Drava Samyutam. The nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam became more relishable because it emanated from the mouth of Srila Shukadeva Goswami. One might think that these glories of the Lord can be heard from anywhere, from the mouths of either devotees or non devotees, but here it is specifically mentioned that the glories of the Lord must emanate from the mouths of pure devotees. Sri Sanatan Goswami has a strictly prohibited hearing from the mouth of a non-devotee. There are many professional reciters of Srimad Bhagavatam who speak the narrations very ornamentally, but a pure devotee does not like to hear from them because such glorification of the Lord is simply a vibration of material sound. But when heard from the mouth of a pure devotee, glorification of the Lord is immediately effective. Uh, how soon is it effective? The words satam prasangam amavirya samvida from 325.25 means that glorification of the Lord is potent when uttered from the mouth of a pure devotee. The Lord has innumerable devotees all over the universe and they have been glorifying the Lord since time immemorial and for an unlimited time. But, they, but still they cannot completely finish enumerating the glories of the Lord. Prithu Maharaj therefore wanted innumerable ears, 
As Rupa Goswami also desired to have millions of ears and millions of tongues to chant and hear the glorification of the Lord. In other words, if our ears are always engaged in hearing the glorification of the Lord, there will be no scope for hearing the Mayavad philosophy, which is doomed to spiritual progress. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that if anyone hears from a Mayavadi philosopher preaching about the activities of the Lord, even if it is a description from the Vedic literature, he is ultimately doomed. By hearing such Mayavad philosophy, one cannot come to the destination of spiritual perfection of life. Is everyone okay? Yes. I mean, you'd, you'd, you'd never go broke taking a profit. So now uh, we're moving on to the fifth canto, and then I'm going to take a break for reflections. This will not be relentless. This is 514.44, slightly relentless. 514.44. And this is a verse about uh, how... Um, the devotee is not attracted to the material world because he's attracted to Krishna. Shukadev Goswami continued, My dear king, the activities of Bharat Maharaj are wonderful. He gave up everything difficult for others to give up. He gave up his kingdom, his wife, and his family. His opulence was so great that even the demigods envied it, yet he gave it up. It was quite befitting a great personality like him to be a great devotee. He could renounce everything because he was so attracted to the beauty, opulence, reputation, knowledge, strength, and renunciation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Krishna is so attractive that one can give up all desirable things for his sake. Indeed, even liberation is considered insignificant for those whose minds are attracted to the loving service of the Lord. Here's Prabhupada's purport. This verse confirms Krishna's all attractiveness. Bharat Maharaj was so attracted to Krishna that he gave up all his material possessions. Generally, materialistic people are attracted by such possessions. One becomes attracted to his body, home, property, children, relatives, and wealth. In this way, one increases life's illusion and thinks in terms of I and mine. The attraction for material things is certainly due to illusion. There is no value in attraction to material things, for the conditioned soul is diverted by them. One's life is successful if he is absorbed in the attraction of Krishna's strength, beauty, and pastimes as described in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. The Mayavadis are attracted to merging into the existence of the Lord but Krishna is more attractive than the desire to merge. The word abhava means not to take birth again in this material world. Which word? A devotee doesn't care whether he is going to be reborn or not. He is simply satisfied with the Lord's service in any condition. That is real mukti. Iha yasya harer dasye karmana manasa gira Nikila apyavastastu jivan mukta suuchite. One who acts to serve Krishna with his body, mind, and intelligence, intelligence and words, is a liberated person even within this material world. From the Bhakti Rasamri to Sindhu. A person who always desires to serve Krishna is interested in ways to convince people that there is a Supreme Personality of Godhead and that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Krishna. That is his ambition. It doesn't matter whether he is in heaven or in hell. This is called Uttama Shloka Lalasa. What's it called? Uttama Shloka Lalasa. Correct. This is proof positive. And one more, I promise you, before we move on. This is uh, from 6.11.25. And this is uh, particularly important, this footnote to this verse is... Um, that uh, this verse, which you'll all recognize, I'm sure, 611.25. No, you may not recognize this verse. But it says, O oh my Lord, source of all opportunities, 
I do not, source of all opportunities. I do not desire to enjoy in Druvaloka the heavenly planets or the planet where Lord Brahma resides, nor do I want to be the supreme ruler of all the earthly planets or the lower planetary systems. I do not desire to be master of the powers of mystic yoga, nor do I want liberation if I have to give up your lotus feet. Purport. A pure devotee never desires to gain material opportunities by rendering transcendentalist service to the Lord. A pure devotee desires only to engage in loving service to the Lord in the constant association of the Lord and his eternal associates. As stated in the previous verse, Das und das hanu bhavitasmi. As confirmed by Naratam Das Thakur, Tandera charana shebi bhaktashani bas janame janame hoi e abilash. To serve the Lord and the servants of his servants is in the association of devotees is the only objective of, pure, of a pure unalloyed devotee. That's pretty nice. Now, in this verse, you'll notice uh, a progression. He mentions various opportunities that we have, whether we know it or not. He says, um, desire to enjoy in Druvaloka, heavenly planets, planet where Lord Brahma resides. Nor, he doesn't want that, Right? Uh, nor does he want to be the supreme ruler of the earthly planets. Who'd want to do that? Or the lower planetary systems, nor do I want to be master of mystic yoga, nor do I want liberation if I have to give your lotus feet. And there's commentary on this verse from our acharyas which point out that yoga city and impersonal liberation are considered inferior even to ruling over the lower planets because they are uh, placed at the end of the list here. Impersonal liberation is at the end of the list because in that position there's no opportunity for bhakti yoga. Uh, at least yoga city, uh, from that position, there's a slight opportunity. Uh, but for being uh, in, a, in the middle uh, situation here in the earthly uh, planets and being uh, human beings, there's every opportunity to take to bhakti. In fact, bhakti resembles what we do more than any of the other processes of yoga or jnana. We engaged in uh, relationships. We give things and we accept gifts and we work hard just so that we can please another person or a family. And that's what we do in bhakti also. It's an exchange of love between. So we're in a very good position. And we can take advantage of that. No need to look elsewhere. Only as a human being here in the middle situation and taking the process of bhakti to heart, which begins with shravanam kirtanam, as if we, we've heard ample evidence so far, that if you hear and chant, and you develop a desire to hear more, and to chant more, then you're developing your spiritual life to the highest degree that it can be developed, and you'll overcome all other inferior desires naturally by that process of hearing and chanting about Krishna, especially as Prabhupada mentioned from the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is achieved by going through the various categories leading up to the 10th canto of Bhagavatam. And um, now we'll take a few reflections before we march on to the second half of our presentation. Uh, Shraddha Devi Dasi. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful citations from the scriptures. I, I always enjoy when you go through so many verses, you know, <laughs> on a particular topic. Um, so I, what particularly struck me was Prathu Maharaj's prayer where he's saying that I wish to have a million ears to be able to listen. And then Prabhupada's caution that from where you should be listening. And then there was a mention of um, Satam Prasangam. And then that took me to right at the beginning of the lecture you had mentioned that association of devotees is the most precious thing and we should not take it for granted so very good nice points it's our our practice of bhakti depends on the refinement of our association if we're in refined association where we'll naturally be hearing and chanting about krishna then we'll naturally advance it's that simple what else yes uh in the third it was the first verse you showed from the third canto. In, in the first paragraph, it talked about how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said something about serving life after life. So that shows how uh, pure devotees don't really care where they are as long as they can serve Krishna. 
Nice point. Yes, and that, that was paralleled in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's statement, Mama Janmani Janmani Shvare, from the Shikshashtakam, where he's, it, it was noted by Prabhupada in the purport that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy parallels the philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is something, as you all remember, Radhika Raman Prabhu brought up in his logical presentation that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy is the philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam. He then proves Srimad Bhagavatam is the best, therefore, uh, by logic, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the best also. Nice points. From the, our pundit corner over here. Um. I like the point that bhakti is an exchange of love and it starts with Shravanam Kirtanam and the de as we develop the desire to hear more and chant more, our spiritual life gets better, I think, is... Yes. I, I, have, I had personal experience when I came to the Krishna Conscious Movement. I had been reading Bhagavad Gita. There's a lot of philosophy and logical points that Krishna made and I was fascinated by it. I could not uh, really um, make... Um, sense of the Krishna book. And we used to, for our bhakta program, we would go out every day on Harinam Sankirtan and we would chant on the streets and then we'd take a break in the park and read Krishna book for half an hour. And they're reading those stories from the Krishna book and I was thinking, what are all these stories? <laughs> I want to hear some philosophy. And, uh, but gradually it, it caught hold. Just by listening, being in the association of devotees, I, I remember noting noticing uh, a transformation and becoming interested in the stories and then uh, it became a fascination to read those stories and hear from them. So by hearing and chanting, one develops a taste. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Davis, welcome back. Um, you know, I was really liking the point immediately effective um, immediately effective yes yeah. and in my own personal experience i remember i read bhagavad gita but, but it wasn't prabhupada's bhagavad gita so i had a lot of questions regarding it but once you read prabhupada's bhagavad gita the sound vibration that comes from that bhagavad gita is completely transforming there's something there's a practical application that's actually involved yes. and then i was also meditating on a prabhupada memory that i heard today by nishimananda prabhu and I've heard the same memory from Indrajuma Maharaj. There is a, they met in the airport, and Prabhupada got off the plane, and it was like this emotion, this ecstatic emotion that pervaded. And right after that, Prabhupada sat down in the airport, and he said, you're not this body. And that touched a lot of devotees, including Indrajuma Maharaj and Nishimananda. So that was a practical example of how immediately effective that effect, affected devotees' lives immediately. Thank you very much. And, and I believe there was a reference to, if it wasn't in that context, it's there in the second verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sadya, Sadya Hridyavarudyate Trakriti Bishu Shu Shu Bishtakshanat. Sadya means immediately. When you start to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam, then Krishna becomes, as Prabhupada said, uh, he becomes uh, compact in your heart. This uh, verse that um, Govinda Charan Prabhu said was one of my favorite verses, I heard that one, <laughs> Sadhusanga recommended. I speak on the verse that's in the commentary to that verse by Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. He mentions from the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam that when you hear and chant about Krishna, then he won't leave your heart. He won't go away. And, and this happens immediately when you start to hear and chant. And even if you do it accidentally, inter inadvertently, you hear and chant. It's volatile stuff. You have to be careful. A little explode. Like they have at the airport when you go through security. I get pulled over a lot because I have a lot of DD paraphernalia. They can't figure out what it is, even though I have that, uh, what's that called? Pre-check? Pre TSA pre? Even they, they look and they go, well, I don't know about this guy. And they look in the <laughs> DD paraphernalia and they take one of those swabs and they run it around the suitcase to see, is there any residue in there? A residue is a, is a perv it pervades the material world. If you associate with materialistic persons, you'll get a residue on you. If somebody takes a little swab around your heart, it's like, yeah, you were associating with <laughs> demoniac people. And if you hear the Bhagavatam, you run it, and they're like, beep, beep, beep. You know, you're, <laughs> you've got, you'll get that immediately, the immediate effect of the Bhagavatam. Who is over here? Okay, Poonam. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I like the point where uh, 
to the devotees the devotional service is superior uh, even more desired than the uh, liberation so in the krishna book they did mention about uh, devaki and vasudev in the past lives they did a lot of uh, austerities to get uh, austerities for the lord and the lord came to them and was very happy and told them that uh, what do you desire so uh, that time in her, in that life i think her name was vrishni and sutapa she said that she wants the lord to be her, in her womb and it mentions that um, uh, even after they saw the lord uh, in his narayana form they didn't think to get liberated but they wanted the lord and it, it was by providence that the lord wanted uh, to this to happen and then he came in her womb for three times in that life and the uh, i think adit um, Aditi and Agastya Muni and then finally in Devaki and uh, it just reminds me of that story and how they, um, uh, it helps me to understand that uh, how they preferred the devotional service over the liberation at that point. Yeah. Yes, later Vasudev went to uh, Narada Muni and said, you know, I didn't, I never took the time for cultivating knowledge of liberation and devotional service and so forth, so he asked him to please teach him. So you'll find in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, extensive teachings of Narada Muni to um, Vasudev. Thank you, very nice point. We'll take one more, because I have more to go. Okay, from the internet, and then Gandharvika, and then we're going on. Because we have uh, tonight a five minute Gita class by Gita Priya Hi, coming up very soon. Counting down the minutes, is she in the house? Where is she? I don't see her. Gita Pri is in the house? Okay, she's getting ready. Okay. So I've got, I've yes. Got, I've got two, Maharaj. One is from uh, Pandit Shivas from uh, Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. And he says, Dandar pranams to His Grace Vaishishika Prabhu and all the gathered Vaishnavas. What an amazing collection of realizations. Much gratitude to Vaishishika Prabhu for his wonderful class. One point that struck me was the implication of a higher taste. As mentioned in the translation of the shloka featuring Bharat Maharaj, the six opulences of the Supreme Lord are so attractive that any desire of the five kinds of liberation fade quickly in comparison to the ecstasy of engaging in loving service of the Lord. And there's another one similar, the thoughts. Similar yeah, there. what to speak of when we've talked about Bharat Maharaj, he was at the, the top of the material world that you can get as far as opulence goes. The king, he had all the wealth, uh, beauty, everything, and he wasn't attracted to it because he was attracted to devotional service. Yes. And the second one is Hare Krishna Prabhu. This is Vrindavan and Vraja. Uh, Vrindavan and Vraja. I was just feeling separation because we had the kirtan and I was thinking, I couldn't, <laughs> get, I couldn't get the same bhav without Vrindavan. True. Checking in from Chennai. Thank you for the wonderful kirtan and class. They should start a little blog called Checking In from Chennai. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the wonderful Kirtan and class. We miss all of you at ISV. I like the point about how Bharat Maharaj had such a higher taste for serving Krishna and that he gave up everything he had. Although it sounds very difficult to become detached, when one becomes attached to serving Krishna, then everything becomes easy. Perfect. Thank you very perfect, much. Perfect, perfect. Very nice. Very good, Vrindavan. Or if it was Raja, I am then... <laughs> The one point is we always hear about that material uh, devotees should not have aspire for material prosperity. But Prabhupada says that neither material nor, nor spiritual prosperity. And I got reminded of your point, service for service. And that's service the for service, yeah. Highest happiness. That's where the soul is happy in that point. Uh, Krishna Bhakta Taiva Shanta Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakali Ashanta. Only the Krishna Bhakta is happy because he doesn't want anything. He only wants service. And if you, can have, if you can take that as your mission in life, ser, uh, serve selflessly, then uh, you, you'll be happy and beyond all the fetters of the, of the material world. So now we have a um, famous verse from 6.17.28, uh, which all of you will jump for joy by hearing because this is one of the famous verses spoken um, by Sh uh, Lord Shiva. This is um, from Mother Parvati curses Chitriketu, and Shiva, uh, after uh, Parvati curses uh, Chitriketu, uh, Shiva is uh, glorifying the pure devotees. 
Because he notices that Chitraketra was just cursed, and he was like, okay, fine, so no problem. He doesn't care. So he says, Narayana parasarve nakuta shanabhibhyati sarga parvarga narakeshu apitulyarta darshina. Devotees solely engaged in the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Narayan never fear any condition of life. For them, the heavenly planets, liberation, and the hellish planets are all the same. For such devotees are interested only in service to the Lord. Purport, Parvati might naturally have inquired how devotees became so exalted. Therefore, this verse explains that they are Narayana Para, simply dependent on Narayan. What are they? They do not mind reverses in life because in the service of Narayan they have learned to tolerate whatever hardships there may be. They do not care whether they are in heaven or in hell. They simply engage in the service of the Lord. This is their excellence. Anakulyena Krishnanu Shilanam. They are liberally engaged in the service of the Lord. I love that. Liberally engaged in the service of the Lord. And therefore they are excellent. By using the word Britya Brityanam, which words? Brityanam. Actually, one word, yeah. Britya Brityanam. Lord Shiva pointed out that although Chichiketu provided one example of tolerance and excellence, all the devotees who have taken shelter of the Lord as eternal servants are glorious. They have no eagerness to be happy by being placed in the heavenly planets, becoming liberated, or becoming one with Brahman, the supreme effulgence. These benefits do not appeal to their minds. They are simply interested in giving direct service to the Lord. And the march goes on. Now, um, 6, 1874 says, Although those who are interested, this is Ditti vows to kill King Indra. Although those who are interested only in worshiping the Supreme Personality of God do not desire anything material from the Lord and do not even want liberation, Lord Krishna fulfills all their desires. So we hear in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedeshu yagyeshu tapasu chaiva daneshu yat punya palam pratishnam atyeti tat sarva midambaditva yogi param stanam upaiti chajam. Krishna confirms at the end of the eighth chapter that when you perform bhakti, you're not. Uh, losing out on anything else. And as Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, uh, Krishna and his name are non different. And if you focus on chanting Hare Krishna, you will not uh, miss anything because there's nothing else to be had except for the holy name. So again, this verse says, Is everything okay? Okay, just make it in the screen of your mind. Although those who are interested only in worshiping the Supreme Personality of God do not desire anything material from the Lord and do not even want liberation, Lord Krishna fulfills all their desires. What does he do? <laughs> Purport. When Dhruva Maharaj saw Lord Vishnu, he declined to take any benedictions from him, for he was fully satisfied by seeing the Lord. Nonetheless, the Lord is so kind that because Dhruva Maharaj, in the beginning, had desired a kingdom greater than his father's, he was promoted to Dhruvaloka, the best planet in the universe. A great challenge to concentrate right now. Therefore, in the Shastra, it is said, Akama sarva kamo va moksha kama udaradi divrena bhakti yogena yajeta purushambaram. A person who has broader intelligence, whether he is full of material desires, free of material desires, or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the supreme whole personality of Godhead. One should engage in full devotional service. What kind of devotional service? Full devotional service? Then even though he has no desires, whatever desires he previously had can all be fulfilled simply by his worship of the Lord. Highly recommended. The actual devotee does not desire even liberation, anyabilashita shunyam. The Lord, however, fulfills the desire of the devotee by awarding him opulence that will never be destroyed. That's also confirmed by Devahuti. A karmi's opulence is destroyed, but the, the opulence of a devotee is never destroyed. Is a kumbha mela going on? A devotee becomes more and more opulent as he increases his devotional service to the Lord. 
he becomes more and more opulent as he increases his devotional service to the Lord. Now, we've got um, service, 1820. Right? Oh, Krishna. Okay. 1820. So this, um, now this section, it's a sli slightly different point. It's a nuance to this whole um, unfolding uh, presentation about the, the devotees not desiring any other inferior kinds of pleasure, including liberation from the material world or any of the five kinds of liberation, what to speak of material pleasure, which is for foolish people who don't know anything. <laughs> this one uh, starts to go into... Uh, uh, our acharyas say the, the realm of service, the devotee's uh, natural inclination to ask for service. And uh, Jiva Goswami quotes this, Tata Paramahamsanam, everyone knows this, Muninam Amalatmanam Pakti Yoga Vidhanartam Katam Pashema Histriya. You yourself descend, this is Kunti Devi, to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service under the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists and mental speculators who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit, how then can we women know you perfectly? So this is a, a subtle point, but Jiva Goswami says this means, uh, Kunti is saying, how can we serve? How can we serve? This is the question of the devotee, and the, it, that how can I find my service niche? So Prabhupada writes in the purport, even the greatest philosophical speculators cannot have access to the region of the Lord. It is said in the Upanishads that the supreme truth, the absolute personality of God, it is beyond the range of the thinking power of the greatest philosopher. He is unknowable by great learning or by the greatest brain. He is knowable only by one who has his mercy. Others may go on thinking about him for years together, yet he is unknowable. This very fact is corroborated by the queen, who is playing the part of an innocent woman. Women in general are unable to speculate like philosophers, but they are blessed by the Lord because they believe at once in the superiority and almightiness of the Lord, and thus they offer obeisances without reservation. The Lord is so kind that he does not show special favor only to one who is a great philosopher. He knows the sincerity of purpose. For this reason only, women generally assemble in greater number, in great number, in any sort of religious function. In every country and in every sect of religion, it appears that women are more interested than the men. Howdy bow. Good for you. The simplicity of acceptance of the Lord's authority is more effective than showy, insincere religious fervor. This is especially true when we go to Asia. The women only show up. If we find a man there, we're very surprised. As the women are very rapt attention doing devotional service, but the, the men, I don't know where they are. They don't come. So this is, uh, this is uh, the positive experience of, of devotional service, to develop this desire for service. I've ruled out these other kinds of pleasure. This is great auspiciousness in one's life, if one gets this straightened out early and, and understands there's no happiness in the material world. There's no happiness from liberation. Happiness comes from finding out how I can do service to the Lord. And that's abundantly available to the sincere person who simply tries for it. And then we find uh, this all-important verse from 1254, in which, huh? 1, 2, uh, should be 54, right? Oh, there's no 54. Uh, what am I looking at? Atmaramas Chamunayo. No, that's one seven. Yeah. Okay, one seven ten. Uh, this verse, which for those of you who have studied the Chaitanya Charita know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu commented on this verse uh, ad infinitum. It goes on and on describing the different aspects of this verse. It's highly important. 
Atmarama Shamunayo Sutu Uvacha Atmarama Shamunayo Nigranta Apyarukrame Kurvantya Haitukim Paktim Ittam Puta Gunohari. All different varieties of Atmaramas, those who take pleasure in the spirit self, especially those established on the path of self realization, though freed from all kinds of material bondage, desire to render unalloyed devotional service under the personality of Godhead. This means that the Lord possesses transcendental qualities and therefore can attract everyone, including liberated souls. So this verse proves handily that even when one achieves a self-realization, there's another level to go to, which is the, the hearing and chanting, devotional service to the Lord, because it attracts even those who have given up all attraction to the material world. They're no longer interested in the material world. They've detached themselves but they become attracted to the sound vibration of the Srimad Bhagavatam that proves that the Srimad Bhagavatam is from a different realm. Uh, this is Tadvag Visargo Janataga Viplavo Yasmin Pratishlokam Abadyavatyapi Namanyanantasya Shon Kitani Yat Shrinvanti Gayanti Grinanti Sadhava. That the uh, Narda Muni says in the fifth chapter of the first canto that the Bhagavatam is a different creation altogether. It's not from this world. It's from the spiritual world. Tadvadvisarga janataga viplovo yasmin pratishlokam abadv. And uh, it is heard, sung, and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. And it's, it, it uh, changes the heart, this verse says. If you hear Bhagavatam, your life will be changed and transformed. Therefore, we highly recommend that everybody read Bhagavatam every day. Prabhupada established daily classes on Bhagavatam. It will have its effect. And if you don't have time to attend the Bhagavatam class, have your own class in your house. Even if it's for five minutes, you'll notice the difference between having it and not having it. And uh, if you regularly have Bhagavatam class, at least read the Bhagavatam every day systematically, you'll notice that your heart will change and you'll feel connected to the spiritual world. Okay, then we come into the realm of uh, rasa, which is in uh, 1083, 41 through 43. This verse is cited by Srila Rupa Goswami. O saintly lady, we do not desire domination over the earth, the sovereignty of the king of heaven, unlimited facility for enjoyment, mystic power, the position of Lord Prama, immortality, or even attainment of the kingdom of God. We simply desire to carry on our heads the glorious dust of Lord Krishna's feet, enriched by the fragrance of kunkum from his consort's bosom. So uh, we get into the 10th canto after one has left the realm of the material world, and then one enters into the world of rasa, of course, one has to go through the first and second cantos very carefully, systematically, and live a life of uh, dedication to the rules and regulations of devotional service. This is pointed out by uh, Rupa Goswami, that one has to uh, uh, contain one's life within the uh, parameters of the instructions of the scripture, Shruti Shmiti Pranadi Pantrat Triki Vidinbina Aikantiki Harer Bhaktiru Patayaiva Kalpate. You perform devotional service which is not guided by the shruti, the shmiti, the pantra, trikiviti, and so forth, then uh, your brand of devotional service becomes a disturbance to others. But if you go through the process of following the Bhagavat Mark pantra, trikiviti, in parallel lines, as has been given to us perfectly by Srila Prabhupada, then you'll evolve to the point of being interested in hearing about Krishna's relationships with his devotees in Vrindavan and Mathura and Dwarka. And uh, by this, uh, one's uh, mind and heart will be completely cleansed. Vikriditam vrajava durbira hamcha vishnu shradhan vito nishinuyat atavarna yedya bhaktim param bhagavate pratilabhya kamam rid rogam ashvapahino yacharina dhira. The Shukari Goswami confirms that by hearing about, about the uh, playful pastimes of Krishna with his uh, consorts in Vrindavan, then uh, one's heart becomes free from, from the dread disease of lust, which holds one captive in the material world. You're in jail, held by uh, an internal imperfection 
of accepting the body to be the self and being attracted to the objects and senses of the material world. This rasa will cure everything, but it has to be administered uh, properly. That's why it says shadhan vito. One's faith has to be properly formed by practicing devotional service in the association of devotees. And uh, because you want more of this as evidence, we bring in 102117. Brace yourselves. Lord Sri Krishna is he who is known as Janani Vasa, the ultimate. Is that the verse I brought? No. 102117. Next book? That's a nice verse, though. Uh, how's that start? Jayati Jana Nivasa Janaki Janmavado Yaduvara Parishat Swara Dobhira Asyana Dharma. This verse says, however, the Aborigine women of the Vrindavan area became, become disturbed by, by lust when they see the grass marked with reddish kunkum powder. Endowed with the color of Krishna's lotus feet, this powder originally decorated the breasts of his beloved beloveds. And when the Aborigine women smear it on their faces and breasts, they give up all their anxiety. This is definitely entering into the realm of rasa. What was the verse number? Okay. You can hide that somewhere in your book. And um, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu uh, gives this directive. One of my favorite all time verses, this verse is from the. Um, uh, where is this verse from? Anyway, it says, the scriptures say that any human being is qualified for bhakti, just as everyone is qualified to take bath, take a bath during the month of Mag. <laughs> Vashishta, while speaking to the king, has given that example concerning devotion to the Lord. Uh, this verse is brought by um, Rupa Goswami into his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. But it means that uh, anyone is eligible for bhakti if you uh, simply develop the desire to have it. And uh, just as it's your prerogative, if you want to take a bath in the month of Mag at the confluence of uh, Jamuna, uh, it's uh, Saraswati, Ganga, and Jamuna. I did this once. We went during Mag. It was foggy and cold there. And uh, we took our bath anyway. And I always remember this verse. And people were looking at us, you're actually going to go in there? It's like, we're going in. <laughs> you can't stop us. And no one can stop you also from hearing and chanting or going ahead with the process of devotional service. Um, just a couple uh, summarized points at the end. That Rupa Goswami then elaborates on this point about eligibility, that anyone who develops a faith in the Shastra, he says, Tavat kar he quotes the verse from the Bhagavatam, Tavat Karmana Kurvita Nan Nirvit Yeta Yavata, Mutkata Shavanadova, Shodayavan the Jayate. Which means that Tavat, as long as one uh, doesn't awaken faith in the Shastra, then one must go on meticulously following the Varnashram system. But as soon as one develops faith in the process of hearing and chanting, then you, have, you should have no fear about transitioning your life into full dedication to bhakti. But then he goes on to explain that that means you can do that at any time. Uh, as soon as you have some impetus to do it, you should do it anyway, even if you don't have full faith. And he therefore quotes from the first can of fifth chapter from Narada Muni, Tyakvasudharmam charanam bhujam harer, bhajana pakvo ta patet tato yadi yatrakwa babadram abuda mushikim kovarta apto bhajantam sudharma ta, which means that Narada Muni says if you try for it and you're immature, you're a pakva, you weren't ready for it, but you went for it anyway. And you, you fail, you, you missed the bar, you jumped and you missed. He said, you jumped anyway, you get forward progress, it counts. You never lose that. And then he says, if you organize your life in the material world so you have complete success, he said, what did you get anyway? Nothing. But so you should try for this bhakti, you should try to move forward. And then he gives more uh, evidence from Bhagavatam 1541. Devarshi Bhutatna Nrinam Pitrinam Nakinkaro Nayam Nrinicharajan 
Sarvatmariya sharanam sharanyam gato mukundam parihrita kartam. This verse uh, very um, dramatically says that when we're born, we're debtors. We owe the forefathers, we owe the animals, we owe all living entities, we owe the demigods that are supporting us. But if we take to bhakti, then we don't owe anyone. That means all our debts. We're no longer rini. We're no longer a debtor. But uh, when you take to a bhakti to Govinda, then you're absolved of all debts. And we have a couple minutes, so I'm not going to be able to finish the, the final thoughts, but you get the idea. And uh, now we'll just take a couple of reflections before we bring on the main act of the night. Yes. Uh, someone please uh, set up a chair for while we're doing this so we can transition right in. Go right ahead. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, I think in one of the verse uh, it says that how uh, devotees take pleasure in the past time of the Lord, past times of the Lord. So I was thinking in this Kali Yuga, in this current age, we have the uh, past time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going on as a Sankirtan and every one of us has that opportunity to um, enter into and that and he has made it such a easy process that chanting, hearing, reading, book distribution and we are in that process. So we are living in the Sankirtan age right away in his past time. Very good point. Yes, it's very practical. Thank you. Other reflections? Yes. So um, you, my, my favorite verse from what you shared was the 1618-74 and um, Prabhupada mentions in the purport that Krishna fulfills if even if you have no desire, all the previous desires of a devotee, which means that, um, you know, any opulence that you gain in Krishna consciousness is never going to be lost, no matter what you gain in the material world, which is, you know, uh, flat, like fleeting. So I thought that was a very nice point. And why did that appeal to you? Can you identify why that appealed to you? It, it proves that Krishna is the Supreme Father, and um, he, he understands the past of every single soul and therefore he understands what they really need and the the act of surrendering to him he makes sure that you're under his full shelter and name bhakta pranashati nice very nice yeah you're fortunate if certain verses appeal to you and you go like i like this this is uh the nectar of hearing and chanting you'll hear things that very much appeal to you and you'll be able to relate them to your uh your relationship with Krishna, that your whatever fledgling relationship you have. Oh, good, it's going up. <laughs> uh, you, uh, my realization in the class today was uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, many times I've heard, but today it struck, struck me was the relationship with Krishna is anyway eternal. Best is to take devotional service because anyway you will be persisting with Krishna. It's up to us to choose to be with Him or to be away from Him. Thank you for saying that because that's one of the <laughs> objectives of my giving this presentation. It's just as, you know, you present uh, closing arguments in a court. And you say, Here, here's all the evidence stacked up. Insurmountable evidence to prove that uh, bhakti is supreme. The highest pleasure comes from hearing and chanting, which is the pr primary system of bhakti. And therefore, you should d feel free to take to it. And uh, you have every right to do so. Nobody can hold you back. If you want to take bath in the confluence during Mog, who can stop you? Put on a gumption and get right in there. <laughs> so just uh, against all odds in the material world, take shelter of this information and this progress progressive knowledge given by our acharyas and feel free to take this path of bhakti and uh, dedicate your f a full heart, mind, and, and uh, intelligence to it.